Hi everyone! With this video, we are starting a short series about how to implement feature flags totally from scratch. We are going to use TypeScript, a monorepo C learner so we can manage our NPM packets, Verdatio as our local NPM registry, a simple REST service using Fastify and MongoDB, and all of this using Vitest as our test framework. Feature flags or feature toggles are basically a technique to change the behavior of a system without changing its source code and redeploying it. You can think of it as a condition to enable or disable features you intend to deploy but not necessarily to release. With that, you can choose which users are going to have access to those features and then you can have fast feedback before releasing them for all users. And if something goes wrong, you can simply disable the flag, go back to the previous behavior without any kind of rollback strategy. But if you are increasing the number of feature flags in our system, we are also adding a lot of dead code. So we need to have a strategy to clean the code when the new features are already approved for all users. So let's see how we can do all this. But before jumping to coding, if you like this kind of content, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and leave your comments below. Our first step is to enter in our projects folder and run the learner commands in it for creating a new workspace in a monorepo setup. We can have learner installed globally, but here I'm using NPX. After that, we must run npm install to add learner as a dev dependency. Learner is a monorepo tool. A monorepo is a strategy to have a single version control repository containing multiple distinct projects, but usually related in some way. Just to clarify, a monorepo is different from a monolith. In a monolith, we have just a single project in a single repository. We are using Learner for managing dependencies and publishing the NPM package we are going to build in this series. But we are not exploring everything learner can do. So I'm going to leave the learner link in our description. And if you want to know more about learner or monorepos, please leave your comment below. Before opening the project in our editor, we are going to add TypeScript and Vtest as dev dependencies. Okay, here we have the workspace learner created for us. Before anything, let me add the git ignore file and add some exclusions. Now we can add a TypeScript config file to our project. This TS config is going to be extended by the package we are going to create. The configuration is pretty much straightforward, but keep in mind we must set declarations to true, since we want to generate the TypeScript data types. The folder package is a placeholder for all our shared packages. By default, Learner uses NPM workspaces. So, NPM will be responsible for cross-linking the packages in our repo and reduce duplications in our node modules. In the package JSON, the root package is set as private because we don't want to publish it to our NPM registry. And we can do this to any package inside our monorepo. The workspaces property is informing NPM that the packages inside our monorepo will be fetched and linked locally rather than 
be imported from a remote NPM registry. In the learner config file, the user workspaces property is set by default to true, which means we are delegating the package management to NPM workspaces. And the initial version of our package is set to zero. When we are publishing our package to NPM, Learner will automatically detect the current package, identify the current version, and propose the next one to be used. We can then choose between some options, like a patch, a minor, or a major change. Let's now create our first package. For that, we are going to use the learner command create, then the package name, and the option ES module, since we want to work with ESM modules, uh, import export. For the name, we are going to use a scoped name. For the endpoint, I prefer to use index. We should have now our package added in our project. Let's see. And here it is. Learner creates two folders, one for tests and another for the source files. Note that the files are JavaScript, so we need to rename them to TypeScript. We are also going to use camel case for files naming. Let's start adding the TypeScript config file. Keep in mind that we just need to extend the one from our root package and add the output folder as this. In package.json, we are going to add the property types because we want to work with TypeScript data types and delete the module property since it's a non-standard node property. The files property describe the entries to be included when we are publishing our package to a NPM registry and when the package is installed as a dependency. The package.json, readme, and license files are always included. So, when we are publishing our package to the NPM registry using Lerna and Verdachu, only these files will be considered. We also need to add the script build to call the TypeScript compiler. and use Vitesse for testing. The option run informs Vitesse to run the test just once. Let's create the index file. And export everything from the types file. Then, rename the types file. Learner's template adds the simple function for testing. Let's use it for now, but changing for a named export. Now, let's also rename the test file. The test created by Learner is using the asset library, but we are going to delete all this because we want to use Vitest. Vitest is a really fast unit test framework powered by the build to VT, so it's compatible with VT, and it supports out of the box TypeScript and JSX. As it shares a similar syntax with Jest, it has a shortened learning curve. 
we can now start creating our tests. I'm going to use describe, but you can use contest if you prefer. For the test, I'm, I'm going with test, but uh, again, you can use IT. And here we can use async functions, but it's not the case for now. You should have noticed that describe and test are not being recognized by the compiler. When we are using vtest, we need to import all functions we are using. The test expects the actual value to be equal to the expected value. The expected value is the return of that function created by learning. And the actual value is the result of actually calling the function types. Now we can use the learner command run to run our test. In fact, the run command can run any script from package.json. When used without options, it runs the given script for all packages from our monorepo. So keep in mind that we need to be consistent when naming our scripts. Okay, it seems we are good here. And now we can run the script build but let me show you how you can inform your learner. We want to run it just for a specific package. For that, we are going to use the option scope and then the package name. Let's see if our output folder dist has been created. Okay, here it is. Note that the TypeScript data types are also here. And now we can create our second package. We are going to follow the same steps we did for the package types, but using the name Flex Client instead. To keep this video short, I will be back when we are ready to write our test. And here we have our package flags client. Just so you know, we are using the same TypeScript config file from the types package. And we did the same modifications we did for types package in package.json as well. Note that the flags client naming is using upper camel case. The reason for that is we are using a class instead of a function. For now, our class has a single static method named start that returns the same string the learner is using for its templates. The index file exports the class. And now we are ready to write our test. But let's copy it from the types package because they are basically the same. Then we can run the tests using learner. Note that we are not using the option scope here. So learner is going to run the script test for all packages. Let's do the same thing with the script build. We are good here. So we can go to the last part of our today's video.
we are going to add the types dependency in the client package. So we can access the function types from client. The catch here is we are using star instead of the package version. This means Learner is using NPM workspace to link and fetch the types package locally instead of importing it from a remote NPM registry. But now we need to run NPM install to add the package. And it should be available to be used by Flex client by now. Let's check this, adding a new test. In this second test, we are going to concatenate the outputs of our Flex client start method and the types function. I believe you have already noticed that we are importing the flag types function from the types package. Now let's run the test. Okay, we got an error here. Uh, let's check the log. Ah, it it seems that I've forgotten to call the start method. Let's fix this and run the test again. So we are done for today, we have our workspace ready and in our next video we are going to start to work with feature flags. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.